musician. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. George Camel, Ramsey personality, and I are here to answer your questions this hour, all about your careers, all about your relationships, your money, your life. It all happens right here on The Ramsey Show. It's a free call, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. The phone number is 888 825 Two two five. If you don't know George's name off the top of your head, I don't know where you've been, but he's the host of the Fine Print Podcast here at on Ramsey Networks, which is a uh, the first season is now in the books. You can listen to the whole season, binge it, and it's all about what happens in the fine print. And uh, everybody knows the fine print's what gets you. So George is going to tell you where to uh, not be gotten. Meantime, we're here to help you. Phone number 888-825-5225. Sarah's in Trenton, New Jersey. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I'm calling to see what you think about um, us selling our rental property. We have a condo that when we moved from the condo to our house, uh, we couldn't get out from under the condo because we were upside down. So we rented it. We now have a Section 8 renter, so we get direct deposit from the state of New Jersey every month. So that's been reliable. Um, but we're trying to chip away at our debt, and we have a big big debt right now. Um, so we're wondering now there's if we equity in get it? out of the condo. So now you can sell it for money? Um, there is right now. Okay. Yeah, we could make like 30000 Okay. All right. Well, but we could also be out of debt still within a few years without selling it. Yeah, that but you just, didn't you didn't start this condo thing to be a landlord. You started it because you got stuck in it. Right. Yeah. So but here's the nice thing. To have someone Here, else paying the yeah. mortgage. Yeah, but they don't. I mean, the Section Eight pays you, but you have to go over there and manage, make sure you don't tear the building down. Yeah. I've had Section Eight property. I mean, the 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 payment is consistent. And the tenants, some of them are the worst in the world, and some of them are the best people in the world. Um, yeah, we have one of the best. We yeah, have well, so far, yeah, I mean, yeah. Who, like I said, I've had both. Yeah. I've had them where I had to go over there and right. explain to them we don't do drugs and turn tricks, right? So um, <laughs> not, not in property that I own. So, I mean, you have to have these conversations. It's real. And then I've had them mm-hmm. that, are, that are just the sweetest, nicest people in the world that um, – are are getting some help right now and turning their lives around. I've had both. So anyway, all that to say this, Mm -hmm. George and I use a process. We use it at Ramsey here all the time called a sunk cost analysis. And basically that means reverse engineer the situation. So let's do it like this. Let's pretend that uh, you had $30,000 less debt and you didn't have the condo, which is what would happen if you sold the condo, right? Right. Would you go borrow money? $30,000 $30,000 of other debt to buy this condo today in this situation. No. no, not in a million years. So it tells you what to do. If you wouldn't do it over, don't keep it because every day you keep it, you did it over again. That make mm-hmm. any sense? You see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Sarah, how, how fast would this speed up the process for you guys if you sold it? How much debt do you have? Um, we have about 120000 without the condo. Without the condo. Okay. Yeah, with the condo. And you said you'd make 30000 profit if you sold? We, yeah, if we sold it right now, we talked to a realtor, we'd make around 30000 Okay. Well, that's a good chunk, man. It's a quarter of your debt gone. What what type of debt do you have, that one hundred twenty? Um, 45000 is student loans, 30000 is in our two vehicles. And, and what's your household is- income? Um, about 189000 Very good. Okay. Okay. We got a good shovel here. I'm wondering if, if those cars are worth a pretty penny in this market and you can sell those and speed up this process. I mean, I don't know about you, but I want to get out of debt as fast as possible. Could you sell one of them? Yeah, well, that's what's making us think about selling the condo. Is to not sell the cars. Uh, to keep the vehicles? Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. I, we'd sell the condo before the cars. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'm selling the condo for sure. You're going to be 189000 with zero debt in two years, and you can save up money and buy your rental later. And I suspect you would okay. buy a different rental. Um, 
No, I mean, we have a great condo and a great location, and we just happen to get set up with a great Section 8 renter. Um, be careful, because so you, you might, you don't don't be the person who dropped one quarter into the slot machine and think it works every time. Okay, I'm just telling you, I've had a lot of renters over the years. I'm I'm a landlord. I've got a bunch of property, and it just doesn't always work that way. This idea that the renter is going to pay your payments is just a bunch of crap. Okay, you pay the payments, and the renter gives you some money, we hope. And in Section 8 case, the government's giving you the money, so the payment is guaranteed. But I'm telling you, there's... Uh, do, do not let the world that you're sitting in today influence that. You, you can do it if you want to do it, but you'd better do it with your eyes wide open. So anyway, doesn't matter. Today, today I'm selling the condo. Yeah, it's gone. Andrea is with us in San Diego. Hi, Andrea. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, okay, so my dad died uh, 37 years ago, and my mom started, uh, he left uh, properties and assets. So my mom, um, we are three kids now in the age of 50, around 50. Um, so my mom started managing um, the properties. Then my did she not? Did your mom own them at that time? Um, when your dad died, did he leave all the property to your mom? Uh, okay, we're talking about six properties. Two are jointly owned with my brothers. My mom, um, in Argentina, when the spouse dies, 50% is for, it's complicated, Dave. 50 uh, to my mom, and the, the other 50 belongs to the three of us. Two oh, okay. properties are like that. Okay. And then two were in an LLC, um, which are um, about to be um, put in a, in a title for my brothers, my two brothers. Um, they live in Argentina. I live here in the U.S., right? So The properties are in Argentina? Uh, Correct. Yes. Okay. So, uh, okay. So my mother started managing them first. Then my youngest brother started managing and putting most of the money in his pocket. <clears throat> then in one of my trips, um, that was raised to me by my uh, middle brother, and they both started managing um, the properties, pocketing most of the money themselves. Right. I was just getting um, whatever they they thought was fair. Um, now that years have passed, I have grown children. I started looking into numbers and things like that, and I'm realizing that they have been giving me between 55, um, 15 and 25% of what was supposed to, uh, my part, right? Um, so I would like, I'm, I'm trying to divide things, to make things clear, transparent, um, but they are reluctant. They are lashing out. One has completely shut down. He doesn't take my phone calls. And, um... So, and my mom, I mean, in a way, she's a little bit biased, right? I mean, she loves the three of us, but in a way, she's a little bit biased because she's chauvinistic, you know, that's the way she was raised. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you hang on. When we come back from this break, we'll hear the rest of this sordid story and um, give you an opinion on it. We're an expert on our opinions. That's right. This is The Ramsey Show. serving Christian Health Cost Sharing Ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
George Campbell, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. We're talking with Andrea in San Diego. She's got brothers, sisters, brothers, and her mother uh, with uh, managing inherited property that she's a partial owner of in Argentina. They've been paying her what they wanted to pay her over the years, and she just looked up the other day, decided to do some math after 36 years, and discovered that she's not getting her fair share. Now she's trying to separate this and get clarity on it, and she's getting a lot of pushback. Is that a fair summary of what you told us so far, Andrea? Yes. Okay. So what are you going to do? That's my question to you. Uh, and also, uh, let's add that they have lived rent-free for one, at least 18 years, and the other one, seven years, rent-free, plus receiving all the income from the other properties, right? Yeah. And my mom insists on me being nice. Andrea, be nice. Be nice to them. Mm-hmm. Be nice means not telling them. I mean, I, I am frustrated. Being nice right? means getting screwed by your brothers. In a way, yes. No, definitely. They've been screwing you over for years, is what you just told us. Decades, yes. They've been messing you over for a long time, and that's her, her definition of being nice. No thanks, Mom. I'll pass on being nice. That's not being nice. Yeah. That's being a victim. I don't want to be a victim. Well, I mean, you yeah. are a victim. But and you you know, and if you're gonna con- either gonna continue to be one or you're not, it's up to you. Here, so you've got a couple of options here. As far as I see it, three. One, you can just keep going like you are and be nice. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, the other one is you can just uh, sign over all the property to them and say, good luck with it, boys. I'm done with y'all. I don't want any more money. I don't want anything else to do with any of you. You've messed me over so bad. Here's the deed to everything. I'm just going to walk away from this. The family dysfunction is not worth whatever the assets are. I'm through with you and just sign it over to them, which, by the way, is not a really bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. It's not the idea you were expecting me to give you. And, of course, the third option is to use the Argentinian courts to settle this if your brothers don't come to the table peacefully and start signing over properties to you. Yeah. I think they're blind. They're blind by rage and fear. I don't care. Um, Yeah. You get it. they, they, They have 10 days or they have 30 days from the time I call them. Regardless of all their screwed up dysfunctions and machoism or whatever it is they're dealing with, to you have 30 days for us to work this out. If you do not work this out by this date, my attorney will begin the process in the Argentinian courts of suing all of your pants off. Okay. And by the way, the attorneys are going to get all the money and the family's going to end up with nothing. That's how this always works because that's how yes. attorneys work. Yes. So, Andrea, what was the agreement up front? 36, 37 years ago, that you would get a third? I was, uh, when my dad died, I was 14 years old. I was a kid. So, I mean, I had no agreement, right? We were no, young. there was a will. There was a, there was a direction of, the, said it split between of what the you. estate was supposed to be. No, there was no will. Uh, we were talking about six properties. Two were in an LLC. Two were... In our name, jointly owned, my, my two brothers and I, so two are like that, and two are in a succession, right? Uh, they're supposed to be uh, in our name. I mean, 50 for my mom and 50 for the three of us. And you said you're getting about 15 to 20 percent. What would you think would be fair? Right. If- what is the mathematically correct amount to get? Um, a year. Well, percentage-wise, I mean, you said you're third. getting 15 to 20. You're saying you should be getting 33? I'm, I'm saying 15, 20, uh, 25% of the uh, 33 that I should get. Yeah. You, you got, a, you got, you got a, a, a tiny fraction of what you should be getting is Correct. what you're trying to say. Correct. So here's Correct. the thing. They, you have lost trust in them because they've stolen yes. from you. Yes. And so you either need to walk away from them or you need to separate the properties. And if they don't do that uh, with reasonableness and voluntarily, we'll have a judge make them do that. Okay. I don't know anything about Argentinian law or courts. In the U.S., this is a partnership, a general partnership, that you're going before civil court and asking the judge to force the disillusionment of the partnership, which means they either buy you out or they sell the property and everybody gets their section. Everybody gets their part. 
okay. you know, force the disillusionment of the partnership because you no longer trust your partners, who sadly are your own brothers, funded emotionally by your mother, who is an enabler. Yes, yes, that's yeah. true. Yeah, and so it's a sad thing. I'm so sorry. It breaks your heart. And honestly, I, I don't know. I, what is your financial situation? How wealthy are you? I'm doing well. Well, what I mean, is well? I mean, house, you got ten million dollars or or two dollars? No, 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 no. Uh, in about less than ten years, we're going to pay off my house in San Diego, California, mm-hmm. and we have another. If you never got um, another dime from this, would it really affect your life? No, not really. But um, I mean, I feel I'm not standing up for my own family at this point. I know you're not. Uh, I know you're not. But I, let me I just tell you, that much. I don't I mean, think I don't you're going to fix money. your family. I think when this is all said and done, they're all still going to be pissed. Don't you? Probably. Yeah. So you're not going to... get their plan. There's not going to be a... There's not a version of this story where everybody gets together and smiles and makes a big meal and is so glad to see each other again. There's that version of that story does not exist. That's not going to happen, is it? If you talk them into it and they deed you your portion, you're still going to feel badly towards them for stealing from you, and they're still going to feel like you forced them into doing something they didn't want to do. If you sue them, we know that they're going to feel that way, and you know you're going to feel that way, and now everybody's writing lawyer's checks too. So it's, there's not a version of this story where everybody gets back together and is all happy again. Yeah. Too much misbehavior under the bridge. I wish yeah. it would happen, but I don't think it's going to happen realistically. So you just got to decide what you want to do. I think you need to seriously consider, from from your standpoint, uh, the, the idea of just deeding it over to them and just walking away. I don't want to do that. Okay. All right. Then you got to fight. Then then you're going to you're getting ready to stir up a ruckus, kiddo. That's not yeah. an Argentina phrase. That's a hillbilly phrase. You're going you're gonna to yeah. stir up a ruckus. I don't know how you say that in Spanish, but you're about to stir I'd up a ruckus. I'd love to hear it. It'd probably sound really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but there, this whole thing is just dripping with resentment on either side. And so yeah, it's just, everybody's mad and hurt and it's wounded. It's just poisoning and, yourself at some point and when you don't sleep of, at night. It is, there's a lot of times in these situations, and because even her giving him them the property is not going to make them happy or her happy. There's not a version, not an option that I see on the table where everyone plays patty cake and kissy face after this is done. They're just not going to. This has gone on too long. Mom is too screwed up. The brothers are too big of crooks, and she's too pissed about it. Yeah, and you're talking international, and so there's not – you can't just show It's international pissed. This is a different level. (laughs) Different level. I'm not messing with Argentina, but man (laughs) – this is a tough situation. She's going to have to get a backbone here. And, and So regardless of the country, this illustrates why you need a will and why you need to read the will while you're alive and tell everyone what's going to happen. If everybody's going to be mad after you're gone, go ahead and do it while you're alive. Just make them mad now. Go ahead and show them now. This is what's going to happen. You're doing cocaine, so we're leaving you nothing. Okay, and you can just be pissed about that now. Okay, go ahead and be mad about it. Or you're dysfunctional and you're disconnected from the family, and so we're not leaving you anything. Let's go ahead and clear the air on that. Right? When I pass, if I'm the dad, what I don't want is for my kids to bicker and fight for the rest of their lives exactly. because of what I left them as a blessing. And are each of them arguing incorrectly what dad's will was when he had a will. We all have our own interpretation. No, yeah, daddy always said, I don't give a, let me tell you what daddy always said. Daddy always read the will once a year and said, this is what it is, baby. Boom. Mama always said, this is what it is, baby. You need to have a reading of the will while you're alive. To be That's unclear. why they call it a will. What is my will upon my death? My will for you is that you get this and you get this. That's what the will means. Yeah. We That's say to be unclear means. is to be unkind. And this is what it gets you. testament, your testament as to what you want to have happen. We'll go ahead and cover it while you're alive and write it down in a legal document. And everyone then is on the same page.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. George Camel, Ramsey personality, is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Sean and Cassie are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? We're, We're great, good. Dave. How are you? Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Ardmore, Ardmore Oklahoma. Oklahoma. All right, good. Good to have you guys. How much debt have you paid off? Um, $243,000. Whoa! How long did that take? Uh, five years and 10 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Um, we started out about 75 um, at the peak. Um, we made it up to 180. And then when COVID and uh, new careers happened, we're back down about 75. Oh, okay. Wow. What do y'all do for a living? Um, so through the debt payoff, uh, I was a tire builder for Michelin. Mm -hmm. um, I was a tire builder as well. Um, I now work for a, a pool cleaning service company. I've been there about five months. Mm -hmm. And I actually started a brand new job on Monday as a surgical tech. Oh, wow. Nice. Cool. Cool. So no more work at the at the tire place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no more shift work. We get to be home every night with our babies. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, five years and 10 months, 243000 How old are you guys? 32. 30, and I'm 31. I'll be 32 in March. Wow. I'm going to guess and say you paid off your house? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! Looking at weird people, man. So you did this from 27 to 32 years old. You pay off everything, house and everything, $243,000. What's the house worth? High end, about 240 is what we're being told. <laughs> How's it feel? It's amazing. It's great. You guys are amazing. Thank You're you. so young and so rich. <laughs> <laughs> so what causes 27-year-olds to just go full throttle on this thing? So... Cassie had actually kind of been mentioning some stories about people getting out of debt. And I thought, oh, well, that's kind of neat. But at the time, I struggled with our income because it was kind of low. She would tell me stories of people that made $240,000 a year and getting out of debt. I was like, well, you shouldn't have been in debt in the first place. But, um, so she had been hinting at this thing, but at the same Which time. Which is what people that make 40 say about you making 75, by the way. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Never ends. And, but the thing is, we were actually um, about a month away from having our first little girl. And I was in a place where I was really struggling with understanding what is, what is the purpose of all this. I was in a job that was basically dead end, that was requiring more hours without more pay, but we were also trying to be involved in ministry. And because of our job, we were having a hard time being able to put the work into the ministry. And, um, and I'm just at a place where I'm just frustrated. I'm frustrated because I don't understand life. And then I've got this little girl who's going to look up to me one day and be like, hey, dad, what does all this mean? And I don't have an answer. And I'm frustrated in this idea of living paycheck to paycheck for the rest of my life. Why? It's just pointless. And then so at my peak frustration, I'm working late one day. My radio show ends and on comes Dave Ramsey. And he starts talking about the baby steps. And just almost just right out of the gate, you just start listening to the baby steps and start talking about the snowball. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And what's funny is about three months before that, someone had actually sent us Financial Peace University. I had never heard of it, never seen it. Seen it. It came from a really weird source, which is a odd story. So I didn't. To be honest, when I first saw it, I was like, "This kind of looks like a get-rich-quick scheme." And it does, I, right? It, yeah. So I just I blew it off. She was all about it, but I was like, "Yeah, I blew it off." Well, I come home and I'm like, "Hey, we're gonna do this." She goes, "Oh, that's a great idea. I'm glad you thought of it." <laughs> <laughs> Happy your idea. <laughs> um, and then about two weeks later, I'm listening to the radio show and I hear my second debt-free scream, and um, it was a couple of nurses they had about a hundred seventy thousand dollar income but they paid off their house and you asked them how long did that take you went and they said six years and you went yep our average family pays off their home in about seven years and i remember immediately going well i don't think we can do that but i'm i'm still excited about the program well i start doing the math and then just that light bulb goes off i said like, we can pay our house off in seven years 
And then I instantly connected that with my little girl. And I was like, we could have our pay- house paid for by the time she's seven years old. And that was like a shotgun blast to my chest that I, I still get to this day. Woo! Yes. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's incredible. I like it. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, Cassie's coming along the whole time saying, oh, good idea. <laughs> Genius. Now that it's yours. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you're enthused. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, it probably wasn't that sarcastic, but not quite. <laughs> not quite. Okay. All right. He's being nice. So you get about the business of knocking out your other debts. You walk through the whole baby steps. You're 32 years old. You have a $250,000 home that is paid for. And you've been funding your retirement all along mm-hmm. yes. as well. Very good. Very good. So how much is in your nest egg? It's a little low, but it's um, sitting right at about 100 I think that's not low. You're well, 32. Compared. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be worth tens of millions of dollars. That's the goal. That's, the, wow. that's our goal, yeah. Yeah, you you're guys well on your way to Baby Step Millionaire very, very quickly. It's going to come so fast now that you got this done. And now that you're in control of this whole subject. And here's the other thing. I think what you pointed out uh, so beautifully, Sean, is that how much you believe and why you believe that it'll work uh, affects whether or not you freaking do it. Yep. You know, and it's like, I can't do that. People like that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. I can do that. Mm. It changes everything. Out. Yeah. And it, it took math for you. Mm. You just it went, definitely oh, helps. He is the nerd. Yes. If we do this. He is the nerd. Yeah. So that definitely helps. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, I, math. I, numbers give me hope. I mean, I get hope from numbers when I lay them out and it shows me that the thing can be done. You know, well, we can do that. Really? Oh, here's how. Oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, way to go, you guys. Way to go. Very, very cool. Okay, now that you're there, you've got people listening, maybe for the first time ever. Maybe this is their first debt-free scream they're watching or they're listening. Uh, they're watching on YouTube or listening somewhere on a podcast or on the radio. Um, you're 32, the paid-for house. That is very weird. You are weird people, without a doubt, because normal's broke. Normal's out of control. Normal Sally Mae has her own bedroom because she's been with us so long. And you're 100% free Tell people what the key to getting out of debt is. What do you guys say that you did that caused this to happen? Um, I definitely think um, the budget for me was, you know, we could see exactly how much and we're like, oh, we spent $200 eating out this time when we could have paid $150 and went out one time to eat, you know, Um, that and just the uh, just being on the same page. Like, where do we want to be in five years Mm -hmm. from now? For me, your why has to be louder than your excuses. Ooh, that's tweetable. Mike, yeah. that, <laughs> back when tweet, that, back when Twitter mattered, people yeah. tweet. That shot, oh my gosh, that shotgun to my chest. I, I'd think about it constantly, and every time it had the same effect. Say it again for us. Your why? Your why has to be louder than your excuses. Ooh, man, and you you've got that that little girl, and you've got the girl dad shirt on. I can tell how proud you are, and the legacy that you want to leave for that girl. Man, that changes things. Yes, You're sir. willing to make sacrifices, aren't you? Yes, sir. When you get yes. that face staring back at you and you want different for her. We yeah. actually have two little girls now. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Uh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, the loud part is excellent. I like the loud. Yeah. Your why has to it's be a good louder verb. than your excuses. Because the excuses are pretty loud. Yeah. And there actually has to be louder than the excuses of your broke friends telling mm-hmm. you you can't do that's it. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. People like us don't do that. <laughs> my critics are actually um, some of my favorite people in this journey because... When it's three o'clock in the morning, your hands hurt, your bones hurt, and you're staring at this stupid tire, and you're like, "I'm just, I'm done. I, I don't, I don't want to work this hard. I don't want to be here." And then I'd hear that voice of the critic that says, "You know, the, why this is a stupid idea, or you can't do this." And all of a sudden, I've got a new burst of energy. And it's like, "Nope, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of giving me the. Well, I told you so." Yeah. No. We have to have that Toby Keith moment. How you like me now? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I love it. Well done, you guys. <laughs> whoop 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 whoop. All right, bring the kiddos in. Let's introduce them. What are the ages and get of the girls and their names? Um, Riley is six, mm-hmm. and Parker will be one in just a couple of weeks. All right. Wow. Way to go, guys. Very cool. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you, number one bestseller, and we know that'll be the next chapter in your story. So way to go, guys. You're rock stars, man. You're amazing. It's an honor to speak with you. Great, great th- thoughts, great lines, great everything here. Very, very well done. All right. It's Sean and Cassie, Riley and Parker from Ardmore, Oklahoma, 32 years old with a paid for house and everything 243,000 paid off five years and 10 months making 75 to 182 75 count it down let's hear a debt free scream you ready ready three two two, one one. we're We're debt free
George, you know how rich they're going to be? Unbelievably oh, so. Oh, my goodness. That baby millions doesn't know what's coming. Millions and millions and millions. That's a family tree that's changed. How you doing? Sharp couple. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, just a reminder, we have uh, our show done on the glass in all the lobby of our Ramsey Solutions headquarters. And so if you visit the headquarters, there's all kinds of things to do here and, and bookstore. And there's a, a wonderful coffee shop with homemade cookies. All of that is complimentary, free, in other words. Uh, you can hang out, watch the show, uh, which sometimes is like watching ugly, ugly paint dry, but sometimes it's entertaining, too. So uh, we'd love to have you. There's usually 50 to 100 people out here hanging out, and depending on the time of year, the time of day, season, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, plenty of room, and uh, we'd love to have you come and hang out with us. The lobby's beautiful, and the headquarters is something to see. And uh, a lot of you, while you're on your journey, can... Uh, you get inspiration mid-journey from seeing other people do their debt-free screams, seeing other people in the lobby, just having conversations. We know of many people who met watching the show from different cities and have maintained contact. Yeah, it's incredible. As I was hosting the video channel years ago, I got to meet so many people in the lobby and just hear their stories. And, uh, you know, the, whoever's hosting that day, they will go out there twice an hour. So it's a great time to meet folks, get your book signed. You get an awesome Ramsey Show mug on your way out as well. And so there's a lot of a lot of perks of it and nashville is not the worst place to visit make a weekend out of it now i mean downtown's a bit of a redneck riviera i'm not going there i mean redneck mardi gras actually Mod redneck mardi gras it's like out of control yeah on broadway but it's fun it's fun to watch if you like watching drunk people do crazy things there's a lot of it going good on good people watching so um there's some good but people if you watching. entertain yeah. clowns you join the circus so just be careful <laughs> down there don't get don't become part of it Oh, uh, it's a lot of fun though, and there's a lot of fun things to do here that aren't that. So uh, c come visit us in Nashville, Franklin. We're just south of Nashville in a wonderful town called Franklin, Tennessee. It's an old Civil War town, and uh, just picturesque. The downtown area there is worth walking around, and it's a walking area. Beautiful, beautiful. Very. I could throw a rock and hit a few cows just from here. It's amazing. Beautiful and from, scenery. Yeah, from from the building, not from Franklin. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no cows in downtown Franklin. <laughs> just just to clarify, but um. The mayor's going to get really upset. I don't with want us, him George. upset with me. Yeah, he's going to be upset. You're messing up his tourism right now. Okay, folks, married folks, listen up. Imagine never having another money argument with your spouse. Imagine what it would feel like, how much better your marriage would be. What about your whole family? You get on the same page? Well, let me tell you what happens when you go through Financial Peace University and you're married and you do it together, it changes everything. You learn how to budget together, you're on the same page. And you often hear people say that when they're doing their debt free screams. They follow a proven money plan. There's no reason to fight. We have a shared goal, a shared dream. Our last debt-free screamer said that, right? It, it can be done. To join a Financial Peace University class and even get a free trial, just visit RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. They got free samples, free shipping, new promos all the time. It's a great company. They will take great care of you for your window blinds. Always use the promo code, the magic word, Ramsey. Today's question comes from Jason in Alabama. He says, my wife and I recently paid off all credit cards and student loans totaling $32,000. I'm a finance manager for a car dealership, and one of the perks of my job is that I can buy new and used vehicles for great prices. We have two auto loans of 40 k and 50 k We typically keep a vehicle for a short period of time and then sell the vehicle to claim the retail profits. We've always made more than we've paid on or for the vehicle. I'm new to your show, and I need you to tell me if I'm being irresponsible or is my ability to buy and sell for profits on vehicles a, quote, unique position to use to my advantage. I'm aware that I'm likely to get the rough talk for having dumb debt and maybe 
That is what I need. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, at least he's self-aware. That helps. Uh, he's Dave aware. <laughs> Dave aware. That's a whole new level of self-awareness. Wow. Interesting situation here. So they're ninety thousand dollars in debt, but he's saying, "Well, Dave, I'm just flipping. I'm just flip. It's like flipping houses. What's wrong with that?" Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Well, I I can tell you, there's there's better ways to make money. Uh, than on these depreciating assets. And the fact that he's a finance manager for a call, car dealership tells me that he is used to going into debt, helping people go into debt, and he, he thinks he's above the system because he's figured it out. He's making money off the system. But I don't think that will last long, and I, I, if I'm in his position, I'm not doing it. But that's one man's opinion who does not like debt. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously we're going to tell you not to do debt, son. Uh, here's the thing you're not calculating. You have over-calculated the profits and under-calculated the risks. That's what you've done. And time will prove me to be true when you get your freaking head taken off. And I don't know what form it'll take. It could be a pandemic. It could be you just lose your job. And now you got $90,000 in cars. Debt. That's scary. Now, are you buying cars and making a profit on them? I don't doubt that at all. I think that's very possible. Lots of people around the car business do that, especially right now. Um, it, it's very possible to do that. So, um, but, but we're not going to use debt to finance that if you're asking Dave Ramsey and George Camel, because we don't like the risk associated with it. The, the, it puts your family in peril for the few dollars that you're making on it. And yes, you're right. You have rationalized your butt off, son. I mean, you've figured out every way that this works and no way that it doesn't work. And, the, the, you know, that's what it means by your risk meter is not working. So the, uh, the deal. So that's if he wants deal. to do this, pay cash for the car, yeah. then flip it, you yeah. keep all the profits. Absolutely. So I, I, would, I would get rid of these and then I would save up money and buy a car for cash that I can flip. And if you want to roll in and out of cars with cash and make a profit on them, that's cool. Let me tell you what will happen when you do that. You're going to do fewer deals. Because when you buy something with borrowed money, uh, you do not analyze it as careful because it doesn't feel real. When you're buying it with your money out of your savings account, it's different. It's like, oh, I'm not sure about this. And you have the, it's a different feeling, right? And so what it amounts to is, is you're emotionally accepting the risk when you pay cash for it. Yeah. And when you when you borrow money into anything, you don't think about it as much. It's too easy. Quote, easy payments. It's easy to purchase. Press hard with that pen as you're signing. There's three copies. You have to get through all the carbon. I mean, th that's the way you're thinking. It's, it's the only stress involved. And when this market calms down, there may not be much profits to be had at that point. I think if you buy a $50,000 car for $40,000, you are probably always going to be able to turn it for, for a $10,000 profit. I mean, you know, and it, the market's not going to suddenly change and catch you there. I'm more afraid of a, a major change in something else where just people quit buying cars all of a sudden for some reason. I mean, like, I mean, a pandemic is an extreme example. I don't think we're going to see that again. I hope we don't. I've never seen it in my lifetime, anything where it just shut everything No one's thing driving down. anywhere. But the point being, what that did was, what the pandemic did for all of us was, is it, it validated that what we've been teaching. And so the, the big deal, Jason, is this. What we teach you about money works. It's the only system for money that works in good times and bad times. There are some systems that work only in bad times. And some systems like yours that work only in good times. Mm. See, debt only works when debt works. When everything works out the way it's supposed to, perfect. That's when it works. But but what it does do is is when your stupid is stress tested, and when things aren't going good, and stress comes along to your stupid, it'll you'll go, oh my god, that's stupid. And you were, it didn't look stupid when everything's going good. Stupid can feel smart because you're not measuring risk. And I know I've done it. I've done it with big zeros on the end. So, um, I mean, how can it go wrong to buy a rental property if the renter pays your rent until the renter doesn't pay the rent? And then you still have the rental property. Oh, by the way, not only do they not pay the rent, they go into Chapter 13. Oh, worse than that, they go into Chapter 7. So it's four months before the federal injunction about you contacting your debtor as a creditor. You're, it's illegal for you to contact your tenant in any way wow. while they're in Chapter 7 until the court gives you permission. And it can be three, four months before you can even contact them. So now where's your renter that pays the rent? See, your stupid just got stress tested. 
and it show, it was revealed the cracks, the fissures in the in the the earthquake in the plate tectonic plate shifted and boom you get caught and yeah. you're like one of those dinosaur movies you fall into the volcanic the crater rut, the cr- volcanic crater you know so beware of that so jason we would tell you yes i would keep flipping cars but only with cash and that means you got to get rid of these two wow we weren't unclear with that we nope. weren't too rough no nope. that wasn't right. too rough right there it could have been could have been rougher but we're just he's Dave since, aware though so since, went easy since he was ducking about rough I thought it'd be nice <laughs> er ish this is the Ramsey Show have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life let them know about the Ramsey call of the day podcast It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the fine print on Ramsey Networks, one of our popular podcast series, is uh, here with me today to answer your questions about your career, about your relationships, your mental health, about your money. We're here to help with your life. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Elma is with us in San Jose, California. Hi, Elma. How are you? Hi, good, Dave. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Can I just say thank you? You've given me a lot of hope, and because of you, I have $400,000 in investments, $18,000 in emergency fund. Um, um, yeah, but I've wow. got a question for you. Well, thank yeah. you, Elma. Hey, thank listen, you. let's just be real clear, though. I didn't give you any money. It's because of you that that money's there. I'm proud of you. You're a hero. Well, it was your book, Money Makeover, that gave me a lot of hope. So thank you so much. And I was, um, I, I cleared off ten thousand dollars in debt. So You're amazing. Thank you so, thank you, thank you. So I've got a dilemma though, because it hasn't really been perfect. Um, my husband and I have a home that's worth about a little over a million dollars. We owe six hundred thousand dollars on the home. I. I don't think I could do it in 7.3 years. Um, I'm 53 and my husband will be 73. And I told him, I said, sweetheart, maybe what we could do is since your kids live in San Diego, maybe perhaps we can purchase a home there outright when we sell this home. Um, And so I wanted to know what your thoughts were on that. So you have $400,000 in equity right now? Uh, yeah. Okay. And you're moving to San Diego. Why? Because his children are there. And then, you know, he's 73 and we've got grandkids and to be with them. Are you retired or both of you not working? I'm working. He's retired. Um, But he just, he just started working because um, I said, sweetheart, you know, we we just need to make things work here. If um, um, what are you going to do? Gonna are you going to be able to take your job with you to San Diego? Um, I'm looking. I may. Mm-hmm. What do you make? Right now, I make eighty five thousand dollars a year. Okay. Well, I mean, if you can move to another city, be near family, make the same amount of money, and end up in a paid for house, all in the process. I don't know what the downside would be. Okay. Can you find a property for four hundred thousand dollars in San Diego? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you can. I don't um, know. It's 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 below average price, but you can. Yeah, the average price in San Diego is about a half million right now. 
Um, mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, that's average, meaning that there's a lot above and a lot median house price, half above, half below. Um, I guess the reason why I'm hesitant is because it's my family home that we both bought together, and it would be given up my family home. But it's just been giving me a lot of anxiety, you know. Um, so I Your just, family home that um, you grew I'm, up in is where you live yeah. now? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Yeah, that would be... Uh, It'd be nostalgic. It'd be kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't think that, um, you know, here's the thing. I, I, It's a trade-off then. You know, you get to live with no debt. You get to live near his kids. Um, and the, the downside is is that you go through the emotions of the family home moving on, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of grief there. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and you get rid of the anxiety. The, that's associated with I get rid of the anxiety, and I could do the debt-free screen. <laughs> well, you could do that anyway. You're debt-free except the house. So we allow both kinds <laughs> of debt-free screams, but uh, either oh. way. So, yeah, I, I, I don't see a, the only now – I, now I actually have a reason not to do it. I didn't see any before, and that's the family home. That's new information yeah. late in the conversation. It's sentimental, but, but I think this is going to set you up to where if, you're, if you've got the only income there and you have no mortgage payment – you're going to be so free. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. I think it's a good idea to stop, though, and say, hey, things that are sentimental are valid. This is personal finance. Then what you have to do is you have to weigh how sentimental it is versus the benefit on the other side. Let me give you an example. A lady called in one time. She said, I have a wedding ring that I can sell for $10,000, my wedding ring. And we could pay off $10,000 worth of debt. And uh, uh, how much do you make? $120,000 a year. How much debt do you have? 50000 bucks. I'm like, no. Because you, you're not going to get that ring back. You know, and that's all. It, it didn't, you know, it didn't complete. If you could sell it for a million dollars, thinking about it. You know, it was 10000 bucks. Yeah. And they make money. And it, the ratio to their debt, to me, it wasn't worth the trade-off. I would not sell my wife's wedding ring, even if she wanted to for ten thousand dollars in that situation you see what i'm saying so sometimes, time, so sometimes sentimental does out does trump it yeah is not there, always but sometimes is there a time where there's a false sentimentality around it like well this is just my car i had when i was in high school even though i've got dead you know is there a, mo a moment where you have to be an adult and say all right there's some things like that i mean and you know what i tell people today is well it was my dad's your dad's what john deere tractor I mean, you know, I mean, what is what are you being sentimental about? You got your dad's old Bible. Yeah, okay. Well, that's an heirloom. Versus, you know, that's an heirloom versus, but somehow the tractor, or the, I've had pickup trucks. I had my dad's old pickup truck, you know. Uh, you know, I wish I had my grandpa's old pickup truck, though. Oh, oh God, yeah. it was so cool. But um, three on the tree, baby. But mm -hmm. um, you don't even know what that is? I know. I mean, that's beyond Stick my time. Stick shift on the, on the. Oh, up on I've the, seen those. Up on the, yeah. Up on yeah, the they side, don't make the those anymore. One. They don't. That's. It was called three on the tree. Now there's like a button you just press. Yeah. It's real weird. Oh, I don't like those. Yeah, I, don't even, I don't even talk about it. Sorry. Um, yeah. There's a little knob. You just turn it to reverse. Yeah. And now you plug it into a cord. Dave's getting very upset. We've, this is just, we've you turned bothered vehicles me into here. Roombas. You just, you just turned, we were having a good discussion, George. I'm sorry. You did that. So, but, <laughs> but this is, it's a valid point. Cause it's this personal is finance and it's okay to have feelings about this stuff. What you've got to do is weigh out where is it taking me and what is the weight of the item and what's the impact it has. You know, if I had grandpa's truck and I could sell it for $4,000, I'd never sell it in a million years. Mm. If I had grandpa's truck and I could sell it for $40 million, it's gone. Gone. So there is a weight to the sentimentality, right? It, you know, forty million, it's gone. There's no such thing. Sure, but but I mean, you, my point is, everything does have a price in that sense. It's not. A but this idea sell. that you're supposed to, that you're irresponsible if you use any emotions or sentimentality at all when analyzing things. No, you're irresponsible if you don't. You should have those involved. That's my point. Yeah, we're human beings. We and got feelings. It's personal finance. This is the Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit, whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. week, Dr. John Deloney's new book has gone on pre-sale. It's absolutely incredible. Be sure and check it out at RamseySolutions.com. Also, he and Rachel Cruz, my daughter, will be doing the Money and Marriage event this coming Friday night. Money is one of the biggest sources of stress for married couples. Sharon and I dealt with our fair share of money stress, and I know how heavy it can be. About 33 years ago, uh, we've been married almost 40. Our marriage was hanging on by a thread. We went through bankruptcy, and that's when I set out to learn the right way of managing money and building wealth. Valentine's Day, instead of an ordinary date night, uh, put them into the money stress to your marriage. Valentine's Day sale includes all kinds of gifts that will strengthen your marriage. Uh, You can do the uh, money and marriage event this coming Friday night. You can check that out. We've got questions for humans, conversation cards. For couples, you can get 55 conversation starters there. We've got the wedding pack for newlyweds and engaged couples. All kinds of different fun Valentine's Day things you can do. But this coming Friday night, be sure and check out the Money and Marriage live stream. All of this is going on for Valentine's Day right here at RamseySolutions.com. Be sure and check it out. Mary is with us in Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Mary. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. I am so, so glad I made it through to you. Um, I'll just start real quick. Uh, Seven years ago, I remember talking to you, and you told me to put my big girl panties on. And I'm going to tell you, I grew up a lot. (laughs) Whoa. Um, So when I called in and talked to you about getting myself focused on what I needed to take care of and not worry about everybody else. Mm So Okay. Anyway, um, since then... um, my husband uh, passed away um, October 3rd of oh my last year. What happened? Um, uh, it was actually glioblastoma brain tumor that a lot of men get. Uh, women and children get it, too, but a lot of men don't realize they have it until it's too late, and there's no cure for it. Oh, my goodness. Um, so um, it, uh, personality changes and that kind of thing, but who tells you when you know you start blaring off that you need to go have an MRI? <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Uh, chemo and radiation didn't help. It just extended life, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I became a, a quick caregiver, but thank you, Dave. All right, so here's here's my, that's the back story. So I've got, I'm a woman of faith, and uh, one thing I can tell you is the house that we bought, um, my husband at first told me, Mary, you've got to sell this house. It was over 2,800 square feet. Or twenty. Any, anyway, it was it was a big house, and um, and then as he got sicker, he was like, "No, you can't leave." Well, I prayed about it a lot. The kids didn't want to come stay with me. They live in the city in Richmond, um, and I said, "No, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it now because of the way the market's going." Mm. So I um, I sold the house. Um, I sold majority of everything in it. Um, I just kept a few things. Um, I bought the home at 276 in 2017. Um, Realtor told me to sell it at one price, and I kept saying, no, I can get more for it, and I sold it for $379,000. Wow. I um, came out of it with $105,000 in my pocket after all fees were paid, Mm -hmm. um, which leads me to you now. Um, I have... um, 
I paid off over uh, seven thousand, almost eight thousand dollars worth of debt that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yes, I do have three credit cards, but they are I can pay them off. They're just stupid, stupid things that I that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, totaling only seven hundred and forty seven dollars. Okay. <laughs> um, I have put uh, uh, fifty eight thousand is just sitting in a checking account. Mm-hmm. I'm getting it was in a credit union. Are you working? I. It, I am. I am a paralegal. Where are you living? I make over uh, in uh, Richmond, Virginia. No, I mean, what are you living in now that you sold the house? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am actually, when I sold the house, my daughter and her new husband told me I could come stay with them until my apartment comes open on February 18th. Oh, okay. All right. So you so move, in, you move into an here. apartment next week to rent. Yep. And you make yep, how much I'm a year? Do that you make how much year. a year? I make. Sixty-seven thousand. Okay, and you're going to cut up your credit cards tonight, Dad Gummit. You know that, and yes, um, and, and I have a side gig of twenty thousand dollars that good. I that I cleared last okay. year. So, so you can, you can you can make a living, and you have mm-hmm. ninety to a hundred grand laying around. Yeah. Okay. So you park yeah. it. You park it until you get ready to rebuy. Okay. That's okay. That that okay. That's why I called you because I'm I was thinking okay. I'd like to get a piece of rental property. No. Cater to the nur- visiting nurses. No. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. No. okay. I want you. I want you to stop. Okay. And okay. You, you haven't had time to cry yet. Yeah. You've been just running from one yeah. thing to another. And that's you, all I've ever done. You sold your house. You moved. You're frenetic. Everything's going crazy. And you, you, you know, how long were y'all married? Thirty-four years. Yeah. You need to spend about a year we crying. Were, we need, were a rock and roll couple. <laughs> yeah. You need to spend about a year yeah. crying. And you don't need to work yeah. on nothing else. Just go to work, come home, hug your babies, hug your grandbabies if you got any, and see yeah. everybody, eat dinner with friends, drink wine and cry. Yeah. It's okay. And, and that's one thing I can't say grateful yeah. that the kids weren't there at the house during that time yeah. before I sold the house because I was able to grieve a lot. Yeah, I know. But, I'm, but I what I, my, sure point is, my point is you're still running in circles a little bit after all this extreme tragedy. And I want you to yeah. have a little bit of room to grieve and breathe without having to make a big decision on this. And you certainly, as crap, don't need a rental property in the middle of all this. It's a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you're just asking. You're asking for more crap to deal with. I want you to make your life simple, clean, quiet, and then out of that healing, you're going to make a whole different decision in the spring of '23 as to what you do. I've never done that, Dave. It's time. I've never just not done anything. It's time, and you're not going to not do anything for the rest of your life. You're not going to do anything for one right. year. One year. Yeah. Slow down. Get rid of that debt. Get that emergency fund. You're going to sleep so good at night, not having to worry about a flurry of activity that you've been keeping yourself busy with. It's okay to just be quiet, grieve slowly, and you've got a pile of money that makes it a whole lot less stressful. Don't touch it. Get on a budget so that you're living on what you make. Don't spend any of that money Mm -hmm. on anything. Mm -hmm. Set it aside. I put it. I put majority of it into a money market and just put like twelve thousand into my checking. Just don't 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 touch it. You know, don't touch it. You don't you don't need any of it, right? Just don't 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 get the idea. You need to buy something. You don't need to buy anything. Stop. Okay. Stop. And I am driving a Dave Ramsey car. You'll be okay for a year. (laughs) <laughs> You'll be okay for you. Thank you. Thank if, you so much, guys. If it, if it breaks, you can fix it. But, I mean, just calm, calm. It, you're, it, then a year from now, you go get a better car, figure out how much you want to set aside for that, set aside how much you want to do for the down payment on a house, and buy you a home to live in or a condo to live in where you stabilize your housing situation. You don't want to be a renter in perpetuation because you lost your husband at your young age. That's not That's not the plan. But uh, and a renter while you have renters. Oh, my, oh no, no. It's interesting, Dave. Every time someone has a traumatic event happen, our advice is first before anything is just slow down. We don't need to make any decisions today or the next few months. We're just going to take a pause, especially when there's a big pile of money involved and things can get out of hand when, you know, emotions are in there. We're starting to spend. We're starting to make decisions while we're trying to grieve. It's just too much at once. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. I've been married 40 years. She's been married 34 years. Something happened to Sharon. Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm not, my brain does not work for a while and I've got a pretty good brain, Yeah, but it's not going to work for a while in that fog. 
and um and I told her the other day, if she leaves, I'm going with her. So um, <laughs> how'd I mean, she take it? She said, "She said, well, you have to catch me." But I've been catching her for 40 years, so it's okay. But the, uh, uh, <laughs> but I mean, the, the idea that that you can just, you know, you're the same as before that. You you, you need to give yourself room. All of us do. Yeah, that's a human being thing. If you have the financial luxury, and she does, to not make decisions, big decisions, quickly. Then don't make them quickly. Just go slow. There's no urgency here. Go slow. Go slow. Give yourself time to, for the fog to clear. You're right, George. That's, that's good. This is The Ramsey Show. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Levi and Sadie are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, yeah. Dave. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Wyoming. All right. Well, welcome all the way to Nashville. Mm-hmm. And here to do a debt-free scream, how much have you paid off? 64000 Good for you. And how long did that take? It took four years and six months. One year of that was a bachelor before I got married. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I really uh, looked at that... Uh, just the report, um, kind of your where the, you're paying interest. Mm-hmm. And uh, that first year, I was like, man, if I could just throw a bunch at this right now, it's going to save me a lot of interest. So, oh, okay. So you got started early, and then you guys get married three years into the process, or one year into the process, been married three years. Yep. yep. Okay, good. Awesome. So what was your range of income during this four years and six months? Um, our monthly budget is based on uh, thirty-six to 48000 now. Mm-hmm. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I own and operate my own uh, mowing grass and mm-hmm. plowing snow. Oh, good for you. Yep, and I'm a bookkeeper. All right. Very good. Good. So what kind of debt was the 64000 It was our house. Whoa! <laughs> you paid off your house. What's your house worth? Uh, the realtor just said from all the people moving into Wyoming, it just bumped it up to 350000 <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Look at you. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I love this. Well done. Well done, you guys. Amazing. Good work. Good work. How old are you guys? I'm 32. I'm 26. Oh, with my a goodness. Paid for house. What's up with all these young people paying off their house, Dave? I don't know, George. You did it. I like it. it. I did How old it. are you, George? 32. Paid for house. Man, I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> That's incredible. You guys are awesome. So what's the story here? Four years, six months ago, you wanted to be extra weird. Yeah, I uh, I uh, didn't really go to college or anything, and so I just saved money. And then oh, actually in 2007 or something, I heard Dave on the radio. I went talk talked to my parents. I was like, who's this Dave guy? Maybe I should take my college funds since I'm not really going to go to college and put it in uh, growth stock mutual funds or something. And they were like, they kind of were on the Larry Burkett train a little bit. So they raised me to to save money. Mm-hmm, but then mm-hmm. I think 2011, I finally was like, you know what? I'm If I go to college, I'm going to, you know, just pay for it. So I was able to put a little bit of my college fund away and then... I uh, was able to put 40% down on, on the house when wow. it was a foreclosure. All the pipes were frozen. frozen so luckily, Did you guys do all the work? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I luckily, had a feeling you were a handy guy. So, and my family and friends and Sadie is just the most amazing person. She never complained. <laughs> we got married and we didn't even have a kitchen. We used a, a second bathroom for our kitchen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so, cooking in the exciting. bathroom. That's the next level. It was yeah. an adventure. But you are 32 with a paid for $350,000 house. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're, you're a little weird, and it, it paid off. Yeah. I like it. I like weird people. Good stuff, man. Way to go, guys. You're heroes. Thank you. How's it feel to be your age with a paid for house? Well, we look at the house very differently now, I think. Like, 
It's I ours. It, I think it's actually made, made me maybe a little uh, lazier. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, have, I don't have to really pay anybody. I'm just, let's go play golf today. No. <laughs> uh, seasonal work. I'm like, take the winters off. Only when it's snowing. So luckily, we were able to come out here because we didn't have snow in the forecast this week. Oh, so. okay. All right. Yeah, you don't have to work. Yeah. Yep. Good for you guys. Well That's done. Amazing. Okay. All right, so, what do you tell? Go ahead. Oh, no, I just wanted to know with your, with your landscaping business, do you still mow your own grass <laughs> now that you have a paid for house? Not as much as I mow other people's grass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Uh, the key for me is you got to love what you're doing. Uh, anybody out there right now, if you just hate your job, hate going to work, maybe you should. This is America. Find something you love to do. I really enjoy serving older people, mowing their grass, and um, just doing that every day. And um, the second key, um, having family support you and having a wife that's with you. And she's just when she just she never nagged me about the house we're living in when we fixed it up. So that's huge. It worked out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> yep. oh, I still it's got still another laundry. Out. I still got a laundry room and a bathroom to finish remodeling. So. Okay, well, you, you, need you always need a, a project. You need to get with that. I <laughs> yeah. mean, come on, no laziness. Get, get get it done. Come on, <laughs> my man. This woman's putting up with you. Get this done. <laughs> so, did you guys have a lot of cheerleaders in this process? Were they looking at you like, "What are you doing, man? You guys are so young." Oh no, we had lots of cheerleaders. Um, my parents taught me Dave Ramsey all growing up. So, from ever since I was little, I remember listening to you. And um, they live your principles and so it was very much just natural for me to also do that as well so wow. wow yep my my mom she's always encouraging me uh you guys are doing great and then one thing my dad he told me when i was a teenager young guy he said you know i'm never i'm not going to give you anything but i'll help you fix whatever you bring uh to me he's a diesel mechanic and he's also done carpentry so i've taken that uh, to the, i've taken advantage of him a lot good, good like hundreds of thousands of dollars just <laughs> he's helped me fix up the house helped me fix equipment so yeah that's, that's, awesome. that's a, well that's a good way to give that's awesome very cool and he's participating in you doing smart stuff yeah mm -hmm. so uh so uh, you know sadie's a financial peace baby and your mom and dad are larry burkett followers and larry was in a sense one of my mentors and it was a friend before he passed and so uh, pretty cool stuff there it's a one-two punch i love it very well done good job you guys Thank great you. work Woo, great you. work <laughs> all right we have a copy of baby steps millionaires for you that is the next chapter in your story to be millionaires for sure you're well on your way three hundred fifty thousand dollars paid for house that's uh that's the direction you're going without a doubt and um also, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give to someone and help them get on their journey. And you brought the kiddo with you. What's the name and age? This is Reeson, and uh, he's a year and a half. All right, And we Reeson. also have one on the way. All right. Oh, nice. Very good. Very good. Have we done a gender reveal yet? Do we know what Not, it is? We don't know quite yet. Only like two more weeks. Oh, okay. Cool. Yep. Very Fun. good. Well, congratulations, you guys. What a great life you've got. What a great life you've built for yourselves. I'm proud of you. Very well done. Levi and Sadie and Reeson, Reeson Cheyenne, Wyoming, 64000 paid off in four years and six months, making 36000 to 48000 a year. A paid-for house and everything at 32 yeah, years good. old, worth 350000 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. A debt-free! Oh, my God. Yeah. Might need to buy a new mic after that. He might have blown it out. And Reeson never flinched. Not a bit. <laughs> it's a real you man right there. You gotta love his family. That's incredible. You gotta love this it. This is proof. More is caught than taught. Both wow. of their parents man. decided to live by these principles, and they saw that happen, and they went, I want to do that. That's well, a good way to we, live. We are really... Uh, reaching the point that we're seeing anecdotally, and I guess we need to quantify these these second and even third generation followers of these principles. That Mom needs and to dad. be our next study. My grandma and dad. My grandma did Dave Ramsey. That's next. Our, did Ramsey. That'll you know? make you feel real old, though. Well, I'm already old. My so, great granddad well, did too, Dave too late. Ramsey. <laughs> too late. I'm there. Yeah. My uh, great granddad. No, he didn't. He's not. I'm not old. <laughs> Back in the '60s, he was listening to you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it's going to be.
<laughs> well, now the 2000s are vintage to this generation, so that's well, scary. depends on the generation, but you're right. You're right. But that's it's cool to see. I think we should do a study on this as we get more of these financial peace babies. Well, that's how these baby step millionaires are happening. Yeah. Is these guys are starting at this age, and now, I mean, we didn't ask in their case, but a lot of these people with doing a debt-free scream, whether they're 30s, 40s, 50s, when they pay off their home, that usually, if you combine it with their retirement account, makes them have a net worth of over a million dollars, and they baby step their way into being a millionaire. Yeah. And that's how the whole Baby Steps Millionaires project me so was excited. unfolded. Imagine kids in their 20s avoiding college debt, paying off their homes in their 30s, becoming Baby Steps Millionaires in their 40s, and they have 40, 50 years to live and give like no one else. Well, and that million will become 10, maybe 20 million over that other man. next few decades. We could change so, the world, man. It's cool. Really can. And uh, create a generosity movement like never before. We could we could all give so much that we could make the government irrelevant. Oh, come on. Let's go. This is the Ramsey Show. Ramsey Personality is my co-host this hour. Open phones at 888-825-5225. James is with us in Louisiana. Hi, James. Welcome to the show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, the job I'm currently working at is uh, it's a construction site. We're building a, uh, a power plant, and the job is going to be over in a uh, like in the summertime, like June or July, August, something like that, like that. And so I found your your book and everything about a week or so ago, and I paid a credit card down to about seven hundred dollars, and then stopped and started thinking maybe I should be saving my money, um, just in case uh, something happens and I don't find another job before this job uh, ends. So I was calling to see what you thought if you think I should keep paying debt down or stop and save money until I find another job. What do you make, James? Uh, I make about 70000 a year. Awesome. And how much debt do you have total? Uh, 12000 in credit cards, about 5000 in uh, student loans, 9000 in... Uh, a car loan. Okay. And what what are the chances you're saying that this could this could all come to an end in the summertime? How likely yeah, is that to happen? It's, it is going to come to it's, an end. It's, for it's, sure. It's very likely. It's it's one of those um, they build the plan and then it's done and. What well, last time this happened? Last time this happened, how long did it take you to get a job? Uh, a couple of months. But what that you, was that was a few years ago. What do you uh, do? Last job I swapped directly. I am a IT guy. IT. Yes. What does an IT guy do on a construction site? Help me with that. Uh, well, there's a there's a group of individuals that are not um, computer savvy, and um, so I help them out with uh, their computer issues and things of that nature, and their phones and Everything like that. So you could be an IT guy anywhere. Definitely. It's not construction related necessarily. It's IT related. Correct. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Would you want a salaried position that's full time somewhere? Yeah, that would. I mean, why don't you go sure. and look for a job now? Be, uh, yeah. What's the harm in I, just I starting to look? No, I've, I've definitely been looking for a few months. 
How much um, money do you have uh, in savings? Uh, about fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. okay. So we got baby step I, I one more, here. but I used it. Yeah, I used, well, I used some of it to pay down one of the credit cards. So. All right. So the um, answer the answer to your question is you have a storm coming, and you're saying how yes. much how much food do I set back for this hurricane that's coming? Right. And uh, how much is right. it going to take to survive it? Well, what we have is we have a predicted storm. Sometimes they come, sometimes mm-hmm. they don't. We know that. So so what I would do is I would stop everything. I'd pay off that little $700 card and cut that up. But after that, I'd start piling up cash and then go get a job. When you get a job, the storm has passed You know, because it's the, the uncertainty, the risk is over. Right. So go get a job now. You don't have to wait till August. Is there some kind of big payout no, um, at the end? No. Um, the The main thing is I, about a year ago, I went and got a degree. I went back to school and got a degree in a different field. So I'm really trying to swap to that field. Oh, what's that field? Start that career out. Um, it's uh, like a production, like an operator. Um, the people that work at the plant and make the make whatever products um usually like a refinery making plastics and uh silica and stuff like that so you want to move into that field instead of it have you looked into those jobs in your area or would you have to move yes uh there's there's jobs all around here it's just a matter of um which i've been doing applying and uh going on interviews and Good. And, okay. And when you get like to, okay, so the answer to your question is pile up money until you get this job situation solved. Okay. You gotta have you gotta have the new job going forward because until then we have a hole a potential hole in August that you could right. fall into. But if you right. if you if you figure it out before August and you get the new job, then don't wait. Take all of that money and start working the baby steps. Okay. And go get the job. Don't screw around. Wait on August. It'll be here in about 30 seconds. I want you to have a fire under your feet. Oh, I, I do. Okay. I've, I've dealt with it before where I had no job and got laid off, and it's it's not very much fun. Yeah, it's less than fun. So let's pile up as much cash as we can and get the new job, and then take that cash and start your debt snowball with that. Start your start push play on your total money makeover baby steps at that point. But that's exactly what you do. Hold on. We're going to give you a copy of Ken Coleman's new book, From Paycheck to Purpose. It's got some real insights on helping you land the job of your dreams, the career of your dreams, and it'll help. So hang on. We'll have you have that sent to you. Bear is with us in Seattle. Hey, Bear, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve, man. What's up? Not much. I've got... A uh, little situation with my wife, kind of get our finances straightened out. Uh, just to be honest, I've been... Sorry, Bear, speak uh, directly over, into your phone for us. We're having a hard time hearing yeah. you. Is this all right? That's better. We'll try and give it a go. Sorry. I'm just getting my baby set up with some snacks. Um, I have been overly controlling with her finances in the past. Uh may have caused her a little bit of financial trauma just from... Uh, she's a very anxious person, so I tried to help by taking money out of her concerns, uh, but I don't think that helped at all. And been listening to the show for a little bit. Obviously, uh, secrets is not a good thing, and I think laying out a budget and having her, you know, contribute towards that is the best way to do it. But I got the free, uh, you know, every dollar app and tried to set up a budget with her, but she's kind of zoned out and didn't want to listen to. You or contribute to the financial conversation. I'm curious where to go from there. Hmm. So she she's anxious about the finances, but she doesn't want to look at it either? Yeah, and I think that's where probably my history hasn't helped out with a lot of this. Um, so How much of this is the, is the trauma from it. you controlling it and she's going, hey, I don't want to deal with this guy? Well, I, I don't think it's like she doesn't want to deal with me. She's got a lot on her plate. We're coming out of a real tough season. What's the uh, other stuff? Parent. Uh, she's in nursing school, so she's doing that full time. Um, you know, I have help with child care, so I am uh, working like night. And so we just don't see each other a lot. We both work in like eight hour week, so it feels like. Um, well, have you guys and, talked about your, your financial goals together? A little bit. The only thing I know that she really aspires to is building a house um, someday. And so that's kind of what I was trying to set up 
Um, I just, I'm honestly not sure how to get there from where we're at. Um, you guys have year, debt? She was, um, yeah, so that's the biggest thing. We're going to focus on blowing that out. We should have it done in a couple of months. Um, we got credit cards debt free. And so the last thing is our student loan. We got about $7,000 on that. And we should be able to get that cleared in the next several months. Okay. Now, t- let me tell you. Uh, I. You, you've got to uh, separate the distractions. You can turn off a stinking television, put the kid to bed. And the two of you sit down together quietly and set some goals. And you draw her into the conversation with questions rather than statements. And just say, all right, honey, how do you think we're going to get there? What do you think we ought to do about this? We're not going to do this anymore without your vote counting as much as my vote counts. I know I've been controlling in the past, and I know you've been absent in the past. Neither one of us are going to do that anymore. We're both going to be here as two grown-ups. We're going to sit here calmly and maturely, and we're going to make decisions about our future, and we both have a vote. If you guys can't pull that conversation off, you don't have a money or a budgeting problem. You have a marriage problem that you'll need to sit down with a marriage counselor. That's what's going on. And Bear, I want to give you guys a Ramsey Plus subscription for a year. Go through the Financial Peace University videos, and we'll give you every dollar plus, which will connect to your bank. Hopefully no. that gets you guys on the path. Both of you. Go together. Through go through them together. Uh, you've done enough separate already. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of The Fine Print and also host of the Entree Leadership Podcast. Two of our Ramsey Network podcasts that are very popular is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your relationships, your money, your careers, your life. Thanks for joining us. Again, 888-825-5225. Charlie's in Phoenix. Hey, Charlie, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. I appreciate that. Sure. How can we help? Um, so I have a question. I, I, I retired like three years ago at 60, and um, I'm, I probably have like about $1.8 million in investments and only have the only property I have is a house that's paid off. I've I've been debt free probably for 10 years, probably. Um, Well, my question is, is like that anxiety because I've been a saver all my life and I still have a hard time. I mean, I have uh, like a side gig that I make about, I don't know, 13 to $14,000 a year at over a few months out of the year. And um, I just want to know what your thoughts are, how to get over that hump that I can spend the money that I have sitting in um, 401ks, uh, mutual funds, um, and an investment account. Mm. Are you uh, single, Charlie? Are you married? Out of. I am married. For my, me and my, my wife and I have been married 39 years. Awesome. We have three kids and 16 grandkids. Wow. wow. That's great. Well, there, there, there's one place to spend all that money on those grandkids. That's incredible. Yeah, well, I, I do that, and I try to anyway. Mm. Are you that. pulling an income off of your mutual funds yet? No, I'm not taking any money out of my mutual funds or my 401ks or anything. I have like I have about two, about three hundred thousand dollars in in a money market account, in um, uh, emergency fund type of What do thing. you live on? 
What do I live on? Yeah, what do you what do you pay your <laughs> monthly expenses with? It's not thirteen thousand a year. Um, I yeah, I, I pay about I, I use my money market account and the money that I get from my side gig. That I like I said, I make about thirteen to fourteen thousand yeah. dollars a year doing that. And what do you spend how much of your money market a year are you using a year? Um I don't know. Not very much. I'm I'm still in that saving mode. I guess I'm like, I don't know if I want to spend it yet. I'm, you know. But what does your wife think about well this? Does your wife work outside the home? No, we're both retired. In fact, she retired before I did. Okay, I was so, a computer all right, so for stop a it. You're time, you're so. you're being confusing as crud. All right, you're not okay. living on thirteen thousand dollars a year. So where is the rest of the money know. coming from that you are living on? Are you draining the money market slowly? You're not living on twenty thousand well, dollars a year. I get it that you're a saver, but you're not living on that. Um. Yeah, we live on about twenty five thousand. No, you don't. What's year. your property taxes on your house? Seven hundred dollars a year. Yeah. Wow. What's the house in worth? Phoenix, Arizona? What do you live in? Well, no, no, I live. Our house is worth about three hundred thousand dollars. And I live in a small community up about 35 miles outside of Phoenix. I live in a place called Santan Valley. Okay. And your property taxes on a $350,000 house are seven hundred grand or $700. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's seven to $800 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, something like that. And it's just a, it's 1,800 square feet. We downsize from a, um, a, a two-story yeah. house and... And now we have... All right, the difference in... Larry Burkett used to say that the difference between saving and hoarding is attitude. (laughs) It's attitude. It's not an amount. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the fact that you are unable to enjoy any of this wealth that you have built and you are living on below the poverty level with your income while you have a million eight in the bank is... that That's whacked. You, You do need to work on this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I want you to and get I'm with you, to I want you to get with your investment advisor, and I want you to start drawing sixty thousand bucks a year, eighty thousand bucks a year, and I want you to take your wife on a nice trip, and I want you to buy her a purse that makes your hair curl, and I want you to buy a nice car. You have two million dollars, young man. I mean, my goodness gracious, you are amazing. You have done a great job, but your muscles. You only developed one of the three muscles needed to handle money, the saving and investing muscle. You did not develop the generosity muscle, and you did not develop the enjoyment muscle. And I don't want you to spend to the point you go broke, and I'm not suggesting that you become a spendthrift. I'm freaking Dave Ramsey. I'm known for being a tightwad, okay? But, I'm, <laughs> but, but, but you, you've got to, uh, you know, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, relationally get to the point you enjoy this. You don't want your grandkids' memory of you to be a guy that piled up all the money in the corner and no one ever saw it, and you stood in front of it and protected the money. You want your grandkids to to remember a grandpa that was kind and generous and wise and thoughtful and thought about the future and also enjoyed the present. Yeah, I I will tell you that when I first retired in our money market account, we probably had about $350,000 in it. So Ooh, the you spent years, fifty grand. Had, fifty grand in three years. Ooh, <laughs> you're out of control. And I'm being sarcastic. Okay. Yeah, uh, I know. Are you hearing well, what I'm saying, dude? Yeah, I know. I need to change my attitude. You've got to enjoy this money. And here's the thing. Let me tell you how you built a millionaire. You used a system, didn't you? You're a systems guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you need to say. I'm going to allocate this number of dollars to this category to spend and then work the system. Go spend it. You've got to build the enjoyment muscle. I don't want you to be out of control. I'm not asking you to be irresponsible. I'm not asking you to be unwise. But uh, you, you're, you, you called because you know you're out of balance. You know that, that's muscle, that this muscle of enjoyment and the generosity muscle are both weak. And so... Uh, hey, I want you to go give every grandkid 500 bucks. 
all the YouTube comments right now are saying, hey, I know one place you can send it, Charlie. Here's my Venmo. <laughs> but sir, you need to sit down with your wife, go to a really nice dinner, get the nicest steak you can, and write down all the goals, allocate percentages towards giving and spending, and then go do it and force yourself to I'd do like it. I'd like for you to go on a, when cruises open back up, go on a cruise around the world and spend more than you spent all of last year. And take the whole family. 20,000 bucks out of a million eight. You're going to be okay, man. You're going to be okay. It's what you live like no one else so that later you can live and give like no one else. you got to play that last part out, Charlie. That's what it was for. It's not for piling it up and looking at the pile of money. This is The Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. attention to the real estate market, you've noticed competition out there is high, in part because available inventory has been low. Not a lot of houses for sale compared to the number of buyers looking. When inventory is low, it simply means there are more buyers buying than sellers selling. It means the pressure's turned up. Buyers want to snag the right house. Sellers want to get the right offer. This is not amateur hour. This is the time to have a pro in your corner. To win in this type of market, you need a pro by your side, whether you're a buyer or a seller. And that's why we find, vet, and endorse top real estate agents across the country called endorsed local providers to help you buy or sell. Our agents have years of industry success and refuse to compromise your financial goals, no matter how tough the competition is. Good news is, you can instantly connect with an endorsed local provider in your area today. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent and find a Ramsey trusted ELP agent near you. That's RamseySolutions.com slash agent. So, George, have you ever heard that rich people are evil? I hear it all the time. That the only way to get rich is to be evil and steal and be a crook. Well, if you made money, you did it off the, you know, it, you made it dirty. You had to because every, everyone knows capitalists are all evil. They, you, you guys are getting the sarcasm, I hope, out there. But um, I've been on Twitter. I know what happens over there. Yeah. Oh, why does anybody go on Twitter anymore? It's ridiculous. But anyway, the, uh, uh, the truth, however, as we dig into it, millionaires, deca millionaires, 10 million or more, and billionaires... Uh, have about the same ratio of jerks among them as poor people. The percentage of people who are crooks is pretty much just the same percentage of people who are crooks. And so what we find is the vast majority of wealthy people became wealthy by being good people, not by being bad people. So we decided we're going to have a greedy rich people segment ever so often. Ooh, I like that. We want to feature some greedy rich people. Today we're going to feature greedy... Dolly Parton. Mm. Everyone knows how greedy Dolly is. She's a horrible person. 
at Dolly's Theme Park Dollywood, she's announced that they will begin paying college tuition for all of their employees. They'll want to go to school, of course. They'll be covering 100% of college costs if you work there, which includes fees and textbooks. This amazing benefit will be available to all employees on their very first day of work. It's available for seasonal, part-time, and full-time employees at Dollywood Parks and Resort. Dolly, you're just evil. I can't believe how evil you are. Dave, careful. Someone's going to clip just that sentence out. And well, they're going to say Dave Ramsey hates Dolly Parton. That's never happened to me, George. No, People they'll listen took to something context. out of context. Just yeah. the latest wholesale, wholesome improvement Dolly Parton has made for the lives of those around her. The iconic country music star has shown time and time again that she's dedicated to her community. She gave millions wow. of dollars and raised millions of dollars for the fires when the Gatlinburg fires happened. Uh, she has run a free book program for children in the state of Tennessee for decades. Uh, that evil, rich person, Dolly Parton, we salute you. We love to hear it. That's incredible. I don't know that I've seen something at, at this level. Of evil. At this level this of evil. This is a lot of evil. We should not be sending people to school debt-free like this, We Dave. should not be good to our employees. Wow. Because corporations are never good to their employees. Corporations are buying in automatically evil just because you said corporation. That does have its connotation to it. I have a relative that goes, it's the corporations. It's the corporations. Like, like it's some kind of thing. I don't know what that means. I'm a corporation. I don't, I don't know. know what this means. It it's feels the corporations. Good. It's the corporations. You've got to have someone to blame for your problems, Dave. And rich people are a great problem. Great one to blame. Yeah. Well, it's easy to blame things until you actually know people. You know, one way you do away with sexism, racism, and um, what do you call this? Wealthism. Ooh, I like that. Is you actually get to know those people that fall in those categories, and then voila, it's very difficult to hate them. That's true. It's very difficult to think they are lesser. It's hard to hate generous lesser people. Lesser than human. If you if you really want to, if you really get to know someone of a certain whatever category, demographic, very difficult to hate people of that demographic after that, if you really get to know them. Because they have dreams, they have goals. Uh, they, they have good intentions, and the narrative that someone else wrote about them is usually not true. Ta-da! Well, you know, you only you see what you want to see, and that's what happens. But Dolly's had a great, uh, great PR for her personal brand. Everyone loves Dolly. No one doesn't love Dolly. But she's greedy, rich people. That's right. But look what money can do. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's awful. It's horrible that she's paying Terrible. tuition for all Terrible. of those team members. That's the most unbelievable thing. What 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 a waste. I might go uh, just work there part-time and on day one, just get some tuition, go back to school. That's pretty incredible. I haven't seen anything of this scale. This is pretty cool. Or a seasonal worker I'm on the first day. All joking and sarcasm aside, but I mean, it's just funny. And of course, Dolly is a, is a national treasure. She's a treasure for the state of Tennessee. Uh, we all love Dolly. Everybody loves Dolly. And uh, not everybody, because not everybody loves anybody in this That's world true. today. I'm sure some idiots some find a way to hate on even Dolly. But um, uh, but oh my gosh. Do you think this will be a trend? What? More and the, more the companies? The greedy rich people segment? More it's definitely going to be a trend. Well, We're definitely going to do this over and over. More of these greedy corporations trying to send people to school debt free. You think that, that, we, that, that there might be a trend of us exposing the fact that corporations are not all greedy? <gasps> ding, ding, ding. Because oh, corporations are made up of people, and not all people are greedy. <gasps> and not all people are evil, and not all people are crooks just because they have money, you doofuses. Dave, you're offending a lot of people right now. I hope with those so. Statements. It's my goal. If you believe that stuff, you're a doofus. Oh, it's unbelievable. Man. That's well, awesome. And here's the problem. The thing that we need to, the reason we need to have the greedy rich people segment and expose the greed of all these rich people and the horrible things that they do in our society, like Dolly's doing this horrible thing here. We need to expose these things because what Rabbi Lappin says in his book, Thou Shall Prosper, my buddy, Orthodox Jewish rabbi, Daniel Lappin, is absolutely amazing. He's so cool. He's when you get a rabbi back on the show, it's been a while. And um, But anyway, he says one of the ten reasons that the Jewish people, regardless of the time in history or the location in geography, regardless of where they show up, they have an inordinate probability of building wealth greater than the people around them. Hmm. And he lists ten reasons that that happens for Jewish people inside the book Thou Shall Prosper, which is a great book, by the way. I highly recommend that book. One of my faves of all times. One of the reasons is, is that they believe that the making of money represents service. 
And so they believe that the making of money is, is a holy endeavor. Workship is very much like worship mm. in that culture. And so the idea that I believe making money is a holy endeavor and I believe it to be highly moral to make money if I'm in that culture. Now, here's the thing. It, it is it, in, in psychology, Dr. John Deloney could expand on this, but in psychology, we talk about the idea that cognitive dissonance, when, when you have something in your brain that does not align a belief that does not align with an action, you cannot live in that, uh, in that state very long. You'll adjust either the belief or the action eventually. And so, in other words, if you believe that making money and being wealthy is evil, it is very difficult for you to make money and become wealthy. If you believe it's inherently moral, it's in line then. There is no cognitive dissonance. And so you have this tendency, this magnetic pull, so to speak, to uh, in your psychology and your spirit to go make money because you believe it to be a moral act. You know, if you believe that uh, smiling is silly, you won't smile. But other people believe that if you're happy, you ought to notify your face, you know, and that kind of stuff, right? So it's this consistency, this lack of cognitive dissonance. But And so all you people running around out there telling people rich is evil, you're spreading a disease through our culture that keeps people from wanting and believing that be- becoming financially successful is good. Therefore, they can't do it. Mm. It's, it's really a dangerous hope stealer thing. These Money's a tool. Stealers. It can do a lot of good. It can do a lot of bad. You hope get to choose. St- yeah, hope stealers are everywhere. All over. And so we're here with the Greedy Rich People segment to expose the Greedy Rich People. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000. All thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. personality is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your relationships, your mental health, your money, your work and careers. It's the Ramsey Show. Thanks for being with us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. With us in Dallas, Texas, Christopher and Molly are here to do a debt-free scream. What's up, guys? Hello. We're so (laughs) glad to be here. Well, we're honored to have you. How much debt have you paid off? $148,446.32. $148,446.32. Love it. How long did and that take? we reached around and paid 6000 on our son's car because we realized I was co-signed on that too. Well, why not? Knock it out. I like it. All right. And uh, how, how long did all this take? A total of 29 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, we started at 84000 and we finished at 162 Woo. Uh, okay. Let's just go ahead and double our income in two and a half years. How'd you do that? Um, Molly got a job. <laughs> she okay. she was actually unemployed for uh, a brief period of time, which is kind of what got this ball rolling. <laughs> okay, wow. cool. What do you do, Molly? I'm a nurse, wound care. Oh, well, there it is. Okay. And uh, what about you, Christopher? What's your position? I am a retired naval officer, and I just uh, completed your financial coach master training. So I'm going to move into that. All right. Very good. cool. Very good. Good for you. Thank you for your service. So what started this journey two and a half years ago? 
Well, Molly was working in a position that uh, basically disappeared. Her, um, the doctor she was working for decided he didn't want to be at that hospital anymore, so when he left, her job went with him. And we kind of panicked a little bit, and her mother um, gave her an early birthday present of FPU. Oh, way to go, Mom. Okay. <laughs> so anxiety, and here's how you solve the anxiety. You develop a plan and beat it. Yes, sir. I like it. Good. Very good. Good for you guys. What kind of debt was the 148000 Uh About 32000 was credit card. 30000 well, 36000 was cars. We had a signature loan for 6000 and an uh, air conditioner loan for 8600 And then the rest of uh, 72000 was student loans. Oh, wow. So you, you were normal. You had a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything, yep. <laughs> yeah, normal sucks. Okay. Good for you guys. That's amazing. You had some debt potpourri going on there. That, so you jump into yeah. Financial Peace University, and what happened? Well, um, we, we figured out that we were doing things incorrectly, obviously. Um, we, didn't, we weren't doing the roles properly. She was the one running the finances, and I was the actual nerd. So when we figured that out, and I took over doing the budgeting, and we just started doing our regular budget meetings, that's when things really started to, to happen. So you took over not doing the budgeting, but developing the budget, and then the two of you did the budgeting together. Correct. Okay, making sure we're saying that right. Yes. Is that what happened, or am I putting words in your mouth? No, that's, that's the way we did it. And, okay. And we followed the rules. As the free spirit, she was required to change something, and still is to this day. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, you did learn the rules. All right, I like it. <laughs> Very good. You guys are powerful, man. How does it feel? you got to feel like, like you got big financial muscles. Oh, man, it's like a complete, I mean, it, it sounds trite, but it's, it's, a, it's a burden lifted off our shoulders for real. Yeah, yeah. And, so uh, we, just, we just refinanced the house to a 15-year fixed, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's, our, that's our, our you know, plan with baby steps four. We don't need five because the, the kids' college is taken care of with the GI Bill. So. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh. Wow. That's good. How many kids you got? We got two boys. Okay. Very They're, good. They're uh, 24 and 21. All right. Good for you guys. Well, fun, fun, fun. All right. Now, you've been through Financial Peace University. You're getting ready to be a coach. Um, you've, you're successful. You've actually done it. You paid off 148000 What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Knowing your roles and sticking to them. Good. Yep, and that and and you know, like everybody says, doing the budget. I mean, if 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 we weren't if we weren't doing the way we were supposed to be doing it, we were doing it wrong. We would we would never uh, gotten the ball rolling at all. I mean, a buddy of mine gave me a copy of the Total Money Makeover ten years earlier, and I came home and I showed it to him. I said, "Hey, you need to do a budget," and then I went back to work. <laughs> and so that was not the right way to do things. And here it. you are now. You went through FCMT, and you're going to coach people, and you have an incredible story to go, hey, I did this stuff. You can too. Yes, yes indeed. Mm. Awesome. We're so proud of you guys. Well done. What do you tell uh, – who were your biggest cheerleaders? Definitely our parents. Um, Molly, Sadly, Molly's mother passed away um, about five months after we got started, and that we know she's cheering us on from heaven. Amen. Amen. And she's the one that gave you the financial peace kit. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Well, but, this is uh, definitely in her memory then. What was her name? Absolutely. Her name was Diane. Okay. Well, here's to Diane. Wow, wow, wow. I love it. Well, you guys are I was in hoping, charge. I was hoping You're, I could get that out without crying. No, I'm here you. I hear you. I mean, I don't blame you. It's, it's, uh, th this whole thing's her fault. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Well, you guys are rock stars. You took control of your lives. That's uh, it's very very powerful to see people do that. Way to go! Great job, great job. We've got a copy of the Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. That's where you're going next. Uh, you're on the way to doing that. You're making serious money. You're killing this. Very 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 well done. And also a copy of Total Money Makeover. You'll be able to give that away to one of your clients and um, and uh, disrupt their lives. You're going to be in the disruption business for the rest of your life doing this financial coaching stuff, the financial coach master series training that you've been through. So you're in in great shape. Way to go, guys! Congratulations. Thank you, Christopher and Molly, Dallas, Texas. One hundred forty-eight thousand plus six thousand did in twenty-nine months, making eighty-four to one sixty-two. 
debt free count it down let's hear a debt free scream three two one we're debt free Love it. That is how it's done, boys and girls. Oh, my goodness. That's so powerful. From broke to coach. That's a cool story. You know, George, the uh, interesting data that we actually do have data on uh, is all the people that have been through Financial Peace University, we track, and the people doing the debt-free screams, we don't keep detailed on, but anecdotally, we hear every every other or every, virtually every debt-free scream, they say, how did you do this? They say the budget. Now, what people don't realize is, is there's about a whole bunch of ways to do a budget, and most of them are wrong. Yeah. There's just really one only, right she, he brought up several times, that's why I remember, that's why I thought as we talk about it for a second, he brought up several times, you have to do it the right way. Zero-based. And a lot of people just think, well, I'm just going to write down what I'm spending. Well, that's not great just to see what you spent. That's, that's a step in the right direction to look in the mirror. But you've got to do a zero-based budget where your income minus your expenses equals zero. That's how we teach it, and that is the only right way to do a budget. And if you're married, you got to do it together. And that's what he was talking about. We teach that in Financial Peace University. Usually one person develops the budget, but the other person has got to contribute. This right. has got to be a partnership. They have to change something. The free spirit doesn't like doing the budget. The nerd likes doing it, typically. But uh, uh, what they do love, what every couple loves, is learning to work together. And if they don't love working together, they're not a couple. There we go. So, and some Signed of them, some the of them discover thing. that too. But, yeah. um, but here's the thing. You know, you you learn to say, okay, here's our here's where we're going, our big goal, and here's the price we have to pay to get there. What must be true for us to get there? You know, what must be true? Uh, I was talking to one of our guys on the elevator a while ago. He's lost 27 pounds. I said, how'd you do that? He said, well, I, I you know, we cut out refined sugar, we cut out all kinds of bread, we cut out gluten, um, and uh, uh, and dairy. That was his thing. Okay. And he said, okay, so what must be true to lose 27 pounds in his case was he had to do that. What must be true on a budget is you say, okay, in order to get out of debt so that we can become wealthy, so that we can change our family tree and be outrageously generous, live like no one else so that later we can live like no one else. What has to be true right now this week mm. in the written budget? We have to be in agreement on we're willing to pay that price to win. And uh, when you do that and every dollar has a name and you're in agreement, every dollar has an assignment. That's why our budgeting app, the world's best budgeting app, is called Every Dollar. Because every dollar has an assignment, every dollar has a name, and you're in agreement with your spouse. And both of you are talking about this every single month, if not every single week while you're doing the plan. That's the right way to do a budget. Gives you power. It's amazing. Scripture of the day, 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Henry Ford says, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Oh, that's good. I haven't heard that one. That's a good one. Robert is with us. Robert's in Cincinnati. Hi, Robert. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. How can George and I help? Oh, uh, well, I've got a question on investing, and if I could, I'll tell you how I got to this question. Okay. Um, I would say in 2008, I started listening on the radio. About 2011-12, I was debt-free but broke, effectively. Um, currently, I am maxing out my 401k and my HSA. Um, i got a little small pension from a previous company. I'm 54 now. Um, I'm looking at advice on investing. Um, the one side effect of going debt free is you be, I became reluctant to lose sight of my money, which I've been listening. Now I feel like a greedy, frugal leprechaun 
you know, guarding my little pot of gold. <laughs> so, <laughs> how big is this pot of gold? Give us some numbers. Um, my total net worth, including house, is probably just under a million. Okay, house is paid for. Yes, man, you have really done a turnaround. Congratulations. Uh, yes, it's just about the decision. At the same time, I decided to lose weight. I lost like 150 pounds. Whoa! Uh, so I lost half of me. I know. You lost the George Camel Plus, happened. man. That's impressive. I, hey. Now, luckily, Way I've only go. made those two decisions in my life. I don't know if the third one would be, you know, <laughs> it might turn out bad. Wow. Way to go, man. Awesome. Congratulations. So what's your question? Um, How to well, invest? It's not invest- Investments. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been really reluctant to lose sight of my money. I, I do low risk investments. Um, besides my 401k and my HSA, I just, I got a lump of some money in the bank that okay. the interest rate is your about. Your 401k and your HSA, HSA are invested in what? Um, just, it's across the board. It's something they do at work. So it's, it, it's I'm a medium risk, I guess. Like, I mean, we get a good but like, Okay. We'll call it growth stock mutual funds. Yeah. Okay. And how's that done? Relatively well. Yeah, over over a ten year period of time? Um, over let's say six years. Yes, yeah. it's done well. Yeah. Okay. Does that not give you some faith? Um a little bit. So I mean you could do that same exact mutual fund not in a four oh one K instead of having the money sitting in your checking account. Hmm. So how much money is okay. sitting around in cash right now in savings? Uh, probably in the ballpark of 300K. Wow. Okay. Well, here, here's the thing. The, the only way that anyone should invest is they become comfortable with the investment emotionally and intellectually, meaning you understand it. Okay? So yeah. let me give you an example. When you bought that house... Um. Were you were you laying awake at night, stressed and wide-eyed? I doubt it. Worried about that house becoming worth zero? No. Okay. Um, the the neighborhood that you were buying in, were you familiar with the neighborhood when you bought that house? No. You weren't. Okay. I was not. What made you comfortable buying a house in that neighborhood? Um, I had accidentally sold my house. Uh, quicker than I thought. I was in a rental house for a year. No, I mean, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking when you bought that house in that neighborhood, what made you comfortable doing that? What made it? it was what the, made it, it okay? It was a neighborhood. It just felt right. And when we walked into the house, the house felt right. Okay, which made you believe, based on just housing. In general, you're 50-something years old. You've been you got walking around since. You've walked yep. through areas. You say, okay, an area that looks like this in my life experience generally goes up, right? Yep. That's kind of what went through your head, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. And so the way I look at any investment is the same way. I look at the neighborhood, the track record of the neighborhood. So if I'm going to buy a, uh, a, a growth and income – conservative uh, growth stock mutual fund that falls in the growth and income category, I can look at that category of mutual funds and say, okay, this neighborhood, you know, here's what they've just about all done. There's 68 of them. There's 168 of them. And here's what they've just about all done. There's some bad ones and some good ones, but most of them kind of fall right here, right? And, and so, and, and I can look at the stock market in general and say, you know, the, the stock market's average annual rate of return is just under 12% since it started way back. Okay, or I can look at a mutual fund that I looked at the other day that um, is over 80 years old. And it only had 15 times in 80 years it lost any money. That's a good neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And yeah. so the track record on the investment gives you comfort. The history. And so that allows you to lose sight of your money. Because here's the thing. In every case, you, when you put the money in checking, when you put the money in CDs, you lost sight of it. It's not in your. It's not in cash under your mattress. You still sure. put it. You still put it in something out of sight. You just trusted it. 
Yeah, or easy access, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you got easy access to a mutual fund. I moved some money out of one uh, at 10 o'clock this morning, and it, it was in my account this afternoon. Okay. Out of a mutual fund today because I was doing a real estate deal, and I just moved some stuff today. Uh, I, I jumped online. I've got an online access to it, and I just I hit the online thing and blood showed up in the checking account. You know, so I got real access to it, just yeah. like more more than you do with a CD because there's no no penalty for. So the point being, I I would sit down with SmartVestor Pro and learn. Yeah, I want you to get comfortable with this. And one of those ways is to be educated. And our SmartVestor pros, our financial pros, they're going to walk you through this. They're not going to make the decision for you. They're just going to show you, hey, this is what this fund has done over the last 10 to 15 years. And you go, okay, cool, I'll do that one. But the thing you're not thinking about is the risk of having this money sitting in cash, not even beating inflation. I'd be more stressed about that than I would having it in a good growth stock mutual fund. That's one of the least risky investments out there compared to all this other stuff that you could be in, like single stocks and crypto and who knows what else. And so our advice is very conservative when it comes to investing because we want you to get rich slow. Yeah. So, Robert, when I tell people to put their mutual funds in, in their retirement and otherwise across four types, growth, growth and in income and aggressive growth and, and, and international, I personally do that. I've done that for 30 years. And I have averaged north of 12% averaged over that period of time on my money. And uh, you might only make 10, but it, it's a heck of a lot more than sitting in checking. And it's a calm neighborhood. There's not a lot of fireworks. There's not a lot of shooting up and down the street. The, you know, it's a, it's a predictable neighborhood. And what you've got to do is just get comfortable with the neighborhood. You got comfortable with the neighborhood when you bought a house. You got comfortable when you bought a CD. So reach over here and learn something about that and get comfortable with the neighborhood and then start moving some that way and, and just watching it a little bit closer. I don't think you're doing a bad job. I just think, as you said, you, you're kind of doing good and you want to move towards great. That's what you're looking for without taking a bunch of risk and without being rash or crazy or out of control. But mutual funds are not that complicated. There's not that much to them. Sit down with a SmartVestor Pro, someone with the heart of a teacher. You can click SmartVestor Pro at RamseySolutions.com. Find one in the area near you. It's people we've vetted. They will have the heart of a teacher, and they will give you advice similar to what you hear here on the show. But you're going to learn about it. You're not going to do it because that guy said to or because Dave Ramsey said to or George Campbell said to. Definitely not me, for sure. But Robert, I want to send you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires. That's Dave's number one national best-selling book. And I think it will give you some comfort to hear the stories of millionaires who have done this stuff, how they did it. It will show you that you're on the right path and that you don't need to be as worried as you, as you might think. So we'll, hang on. We're going to get you a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires. And we're cheering you on, man, as you continue your wealth-building journey. Absolutely. George, good show today. Fun times. Thank you. Well Dave. done. Good show to all you people in the booth. We used to try There's to call so their many. names. There's too many There's of them. There's 15 of them in there. There's too many of them. And some of them are on the operating board. So That's right. You know, there you go. That's how that works. Board operator. I messed it up one time, and I'll never live it down. You're right. You won't. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. This is James Childs, producer of The Ramsey Show. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Subscribe or follow today wherever you listen to podcasts.